Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be discussing about Azure SQL Managed Instance. So let's get into the video. Now what is Azure SQL Managed Instance? So before I'll go ahead with this, let me open my Azure portal and try to explain three types of Azure databases we can create on Azure. Okay, and for that guys, this is my Azure portal. When I click on this create a resource and type Azure SQL. When I type Azure SQL and select this one and click on create, you will get three options over there. You will get three options. Now, one option is in the category of IAS, that is infrastructure as service. And the other two will be a part of platform as a service. So let's do it in this way on a notepad. First of all, on the top, Azure SQL VM. Okay. This Azure SQL VM can have multiple SQL Server instances. Okay. And each instance can have multiple databases over there. Understood? Then we have Azure. SQL managed instance. So as per the name, it defines that it is a single instance of SQL or SQL Server, you can say. And it can have multiple databases only. So that is one instance only. Understood? One instance. Azure. SQL database generally we call it as a single database the entity or the uh, uh, you can say uh, the scope is up to a single database only now when I talk about Azure VM let's say we have eight virtual cores or eight virtual CPUs okay and we have uh, uh, 16 gigs or 32 gigs of RAM Okay, that will be distributed across all the instances and all the databases in their corresponding index uh, instances. In that same way, if my instance have same eight VC virtual CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM, then that particular configuration is distributed across the databases within that instance. Okay, not across multiple servers, multiple instances, across only on for the databases. And when I say the same resource we have, let's say uh, four gigs of RAM and one or two virtual CPUs we have. So these two configurations are applicable only for that single database. The differences between these two, these three, sorry. Now, whatever features we have in Azure VM, out of that, 99% features are matching. Are same in managed. Just like Azure VM or Azure SQL VM. So when I say 99% of features, that same features like creating jobs, having database engine, having security folder, having management folder, so whatever folders you generally have at server level, all those features are applied for managed instance, although it's a platform as a service. Still, you're getting same level of features, just like almost same level of features, just like an Azure VM, but you are still not managing a proper VM in the background. Understood? You're only creating a managed instance, but still it's a platform as a service, not infrastructure as a service. I can't even say that it's a proper or a pure platform as a service. It's somewhere lies between infrastructure and platform as a service. If I talk about the features that they are offering. So Azure SQL Managed Instance. Managed Instance is a platform as a service that offers 99% of the functionalities of the SQL Server. Includes SQL Server Agent, Service Broker, Common Language, Runtime, CLR. They are offering that means you can add assemblies over there and you can integrate the you can say SQL code or sorry the C sharp and other uh, .NET code here. The Azure platform manages the backup patching and high availability. That means that pass level features are also implemented. That's why it's not 
a part of pure IAS uh, architecture. It allows for cross database queries within that instance. So I'm not considering linked server here. I'm only considering cross database queries that are not allowed in Azure SQL DB because that is an individual database. So those database dot schema dot table name queries now will not work in Azure SQL DB. So again pricing tier. So they have given two different pricing tier four different pricing tier actually like general purpose. You will get up to 8 TB of data support in business critical. You will get uh, 4 TB of data, but with direct attached storage support and in memory OLTP support as well. I hope you have heard about in memory. There are some in memory databases or tables in memory tables. You can create it in memory. Your data is stored on your uh, hard drives or you can say your actual storage, but when the server ups. Okay, when the server starts whatever tables working or behaving like are in memory one their data comes automatically onto the memory so that readability will be faster. Okay, so that comes as a feature but and uh, the readable uh, replicas even you will get it over here in the business critical you will not get it in the general purpose. So carefully use it migrating Azure SQL managed instance how we are migrating to. So first of all database migration services we can use that will allow near zero downtime migration to Azure SQL managed instance replace transaction lock to target Azure SQL managed instance over here. Another way is backup and restoring your databases over there simple. So restoring databases into managed instance is a supported migrated path is a supported uh, migration path and user restore do not support no recovery option over here. That means you can restore your databases but you cannot use no recovery option. That means you have to do a full restore every time. If you have a series of transaction log files that is not applicable here. Okay, the easiest way to migrate is take a full backup and restore it on the managed instance. Azure SQL database. Now this is actually a platform as a service. It is actually a type of a single database first of all and the pricing tiers that means in how many Pricing tiers I can deploy this Azure SQL DB in a single database. We are a single database deployment that allows a rapid deployment. Elastic pool. When I say elastic pool, okay, let me explain this elastic pool first. Let me open this notepad. As I have explained, that if I need to create an Azure SQL DB, what you need to create first. So let's say I have logged into Azure portal. Okay. After logging into Azure portal, I have created or I have selected my subscription. Is whatever uh, subscription I'm using here from where amount will be deducted. Then I'll create the my first object on cloud that is resource group. After creating resource group, I need to create an Azure SQL DB or SQL database. You can simply type but it is not allowed to create a direct SQL database even on cloud. So how it will go or how it will be uh, created. So when you start creating Azure SQL DB, it will ask you to create SQL server logical server first. It is just a declaration of these three layers. So whenever we have a database obviously database should be a part of a server first. Although you are not installing or creating anything, but you have to declare at least understood like an alias. So let's say one database you have deployed in this one logical server. Now let's say I need to create another SQL Azure SQL DB. So in that case what you will do create another logical server or we can refer the same. Can we have a server having multiple databases? Of course can have that. So when I'm creating okay. another one, let's let's say this one is one Azure SQL database. Two. So when you are creating a second one, you just need to select that old one in the list while you're searching for server instead of creating a new one. So although database one and database two are single databases, even the cross database queries will not allowed, but they both can refer to one logical server or both can point to one logical server. They are not related, 
their configurations are same one database can have high configuration with lots of gbs of ram and a high amount of uh, data storage and another one can have one gigas or gigs of ram and one virtual cpu that doesn't matter configuration could be of any difference but they could be a part of single logical server now next thing we have elastic pool now carefully understand this let's say i have one logical server and there are around around 100 databases over there within that same logical server although they are single databases but they are a part of single logical server okay now all the logic all the databases we have let's say having some kind of a similar pricing tier okay two gigs of ram one virtual cpu that is the same for all database now if any of the database for any instance of time having a requirement of more cpus and more gigs of ram or you can simply use the term they require more resources so what you will do you will go to that database and simply increase that pricing tier of the database after analyzing the requirement of it am i right because as we are setting up the configuration at each database level it needs to be set at each database level now in that case we have this elastic pool comes into play it is something like automate the process of distributing the resources but from where are we going to setting up or automating the configuration of each database no i'm not going to touch any of these database i'm going to simply create one elastic pool within this logical server so elastic pool will be created in this logical server only okay and elastic pool will be configured with high configuration or let's say with more scalable uh, resources configured with high resources or more number of resources you can say clear now what will happen i'll map all these 100 databases within this or point to this elastic pool now we have 100 databases which is a part of this elastic pool that doesn't mean that uh, means it doesn't mean that all the database is somehow a part of a group no they are not a part of a group they are not even going to uh, uh, start running cross database queries nothing will be changed the feature list will be the same the benefit they will get it from elastic pool is let's say elastic pool have 30 or 64 gigs of ram okay 30 64 gigs of ram or i'm just considering it as 100 my total resources are 100 let's say azure sql database one and two require 20 percent of resources from elastic pool so you don't need to individually set the pricing tier of uh, database in one and two they will automatically take 20 percent from here out of this 100 use it and once it's done give back to this elastic pool now when those 20 percent is in you is you can say is in use other 80 percent is always available for the other 98 databases and they can share the resources you have created a pool of resources that can be shared by 100 databases which is a which are the uh, you can say which comes in that same group of elastic pool that's so you have added only 50 into that elastic pool or map 50 only so only 50 can share that elastic pool resources now the benefit is changing the pricing tier of individual database can cost or could cost more in that case so it's better to have one high pricing tier resource that can be shared by the 100 or 50 databases at any instance of time so in that same way some other uh, pricing tiers or other uh, categories of azure sql database like hyperscale and serverless where you will get uh, uh, more limit from the uh, from the from the size perspective or from the you can say from the serverless approach they are following like uh, in serverless option allows you uh, allows for the reduce the reducing the cost by enabling auto pause for non production workloads so that will ultimately reduce your cost let's say you're using it for some other purpose so it will auto pause your databases although 
pause option is not there in any of these categories like single elastic pool or hyperscale even in serverless we don't have uh, pausing that pausing it as a uh, manual one so auto pause is there but that is again controlled by the microsoft you cannot pause any database now additional to that uh, sql database what other databases azure supports so it supports mariadb it supports mysql it supports postgresql as well and they are also single databases understood but but in case of postgresql that postgresql is not actually a single database it is individual instance so do not compare azure sql database for sql server and azure sql database for postgresql so azure sql database is a single database instance single database but postgresql is acting like a single database instance like a managed instance some compatibility levels they are explaining means if you are deploying anything on azure so what type of support you will get it from azure side so they are saying sql server releases are primary supports for five years first of all and sql server provides extended support for the next five years that is a benefit you will get it in that same way currently supported releases of sql server on azure and that is from 2012 2019 it supports but 2008 8 r2 it will not support so that means you need an upgradation from 2008 r2 to 12 first then only you can migrate it onto azure compatibility level they have given over here database level settings currently sql 2019 up to this they are providing the compatibility level support allow query optimizer behavior and most t sql syntax to maintain behavior of older version of database engine affects behavior of given database and not the entire server so that level of compatibility they are providing here from 100 to 150 that is from 2008 to 2019 t sql things they are actually going to uh, manage and it will only affect the database not the entire server for which you are actually uh, migrating these these are the things that will get affected when you are migrating anything from uh, any old version to the new one and when you're moving it on to azure so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if you have any doubts or if you feel that you're lagging behind then we have something really special for you we have our free class on microsoft azure database administrator certification that is dp300 and if you want to enroll for the same then all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash dp3002 you'll be seeing this kind of interface you just have to click on book your free seat now and in this free course you'll be learning about why I learn azure sql databases on cloud from microsoft roles in data on cloud azure certification path for dbas and data professionals and whatnot so all you have to do is just select an event date according to your availability add your full name your email address Add your phone number and click on yes, save my seats now. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of free link. You just have to select this link, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.